you mentioned the kind of limits of science and how you've written, you wrote this wonderful book called Rational Mysticism, um, a kind of going beyond science or in, when it comes to understanding consciousness. Um, so yeah, maybe that's a good place to go next. And maybe this comes back to the weirdness that I accidentally cut you off about earlier. Sure, well, okay, so I, I wrote, as I said, my first book, The End of Science, that came out in 1996, and uh, it was uh, an expression of this growing suspicion I had um, that after having been a science journalist for, I don't know, maybe a dozen years, uh, that um, all the major fields of science that are really trying to address some of these ultimate questions about, you know, where we came from and, and uh, where we're headed, what we are, um, we're bumping into limits. And uh, that, they're, that the really major discoveries were behind them. And, uh, and so the possibility, and yet, you know, there's a lot we don't know. We don't know how the universe was created in the first place. We still don't have an adequate understanding of how life emerged on earth and uh, whether that was just a, um, a fluke or somehow inevitable and an inevitable consequence of the laws of physics and, and uh, chemistry and so forth. And so I became a science journalist and I think a lot of scientists have this goal in mind too, because I wanted to understand what the hell is going on. That I wanted a revelation so powerful that it would dispel the sense of weirdness that I've always had when I contemplate uh, the world. So the world is this, is this question and science possibly can deliver the answer. And then I just thought that's not going to happen. Um, and so is there any possibility of an ultimate answer of a great revelation? And I went back to these experiences that I'd had in my youth. Uh, you know, I dabbled in, in Eastern mysticism and I also took a lot of psychedelics and I had, I had lots of mystical experiences, especially from this one particular trip that kind of really gave me almost more of a revelation than uh, I wanted. And so I wrote Rational Mysticism to try to, to answer my own questions about whether there's a way of looking at the world that combines science and mysticism, mysticism and spirituality and religion and all those associated uh, topics in, in, in a way that would sort of be complementary. Um, so in other words, is, are science and mysticism compatible in some way? Um, and I concluded that they are, but not, not in the sense of giving us answers, but more um, in underlining the weirdness. So science has told us that, um, that our existence is highly improbable. The origin of the universe uh, was highly improbable. How the, the Big Bang produced this particular universe. The origin of life on Earth, highly improbable, according to the great Francis Crick, among others, who looked at it. Crick, once again, you know, a total atheist once said that the longer we look at the origin of life, the more it looks like a miracle. It's really hard to imagine how it happened. And then life produced us, these creatures capable of, of reflection and invention um, who can wonder about their own uh, origins. And so it seemed like science was po pointing in all these directions that instead of dispelling, dispelling the weirdness made it deeper exacerbated these feelings. And mysticism for me, my most exalted uh, psychedelic experiences, again, were um, not sort of saying, here's what's going on, where I'd go, oh, right, I get it. It was more just making the world, giving me this emotional, visceral feeling of the weirdness of the world as being mm -hmm infinitely improbable you go what the fuck <laughs> and so it was it was kind of the emotional uh complement 
of what science was telling me anyway, rationally, that there's no reason for us to be here. Uh, we are infinitely improbable um, and it's impossible to know why we're here and yet here we are. That was the only way that I could make mysticism and, uh, and science um, compatible. And for a lot of people, that's completely unsatisfying uh, because they, do, they still want the answers. They want the ultimate answers from, from science or mysticism. Yeah, I think also the thing you said about this kind of the feeling, the feeling, the weirdness and the kind of emotional states. To me, it fits with what we were talking about earlier when it comes to stories about ourselves, whether they're true or not. With, with scientific kind of explanations, you're ultimately just telling a story, right? It's not it's this kind of concept that the map isn't the territory. This, the theories we have can be true, but they're, they're descriptions of reality. They aren't reality itself. They're just a, a way of talking about it. Whereas yeah. with mysticism, I feel that, yeah, it's far more experiential and you're really getting into like, what does it feel like to exist here as this strange like creature? 